Hello guys, welcome to 16.2 and we're gonna go to Japan, alright? Um, kind of makes me a little crazy that your book does it this way, but I'll explain why in a minute. So we're gonna look at the road to Pearl Harbor, alright? Each of the slides this week will have a pretty good picture on the background and we'll bring other stuff in. <coughs> Japan plan was after they had already taken Manchuria, their plan was to attack European colonies in Southeast Asia. Notice here it says French Indochina. Japanese cracked their codes and sent aid to the Chinese uh, resistance. Remember, they had been fighting Japan since 1931. So America's lined up and helping the Chinese. And in July of 1941, Roosevelt cuts off oil to Japan. So Japan's not able to import anything. And this is a key point because now Japan feels trapped. They feel like they can't bring in the materials they need. That is a huge, huge factor, right? And, oh, that's bad. And the last point here is that the leader of the Japanese, uh, Yamamoto, calls for an all-out attack on the U.S. fleet. And the reason for that is they now know they can't bring anything in. They kind of feel trapped. Remember, what is Japan? Japan is an... You should be yelling island now. All right. Well, we did that. Good, 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 good. All right. Pearl Harbor. Surprise attack. Severely damaged naval fleets. Uh, Pearl Harbor is this um, uh, military naval base in Hawaii where the United States was keeping its ships. And many of those ships were famously sunk. Over 2,300 Americans were killed. Over 1,100 were wounded. December 8th, uh, Roosevelt addressed Congress and declared war on Japan. This is a day that will live in infamy is his famous line. Interesting thing, there were actually Japanese diplomats in D.C. waiting to meet with Roosevelt. They pulled like the ultimate kind of rope-a-dope trick. The Americans thought we were negotiating. Next thing we know, boom, boom, boom. Early on the morning on a Sunday, the United States gets attacked. Again, a date which will live in infamy. Early on, Japan is victorious. Japanese victories. What are we looking at? Pearl Harbor is a victory. Hong Kong, they beat the British. They take Guam, and they take the Wake Islands. Japanese attack the Philippines, and they fall. So remember, this is a little confusing. The significant Japanese battles start in 41 with Pearl Harbor, and then they last till 42, as we see here with the Philippines. Japan captures Hong Kong, Singapore, and the Dutch East Indies. So Japan is doing really well, all right? And what's interesting about the Japanese is they treated the people they captured brutally, terribly. They were uh, hideously mean, I guess would be the word. Hideously inhuman. Inhumane. I don't know why he's doing that. All right? And the best example of that is the Bataan Death March. Uh, 70,000 Allied prisoners marched 50 miles up the Bataan Peninsula in the Philippines. Many were beaten and killed along the way. 54,000 survived the march. So you can assume 16 k die along the way. All right, and just real quick, gosh, bless America. Look quick, there's a pretty good picture of it, all right? And we did that, we did that, we laughed, we cried, hopefully we cried. Um, again, this Bataan math death march hideously inhumane. So finally, in 1942, the Allies are going to strike back. How do the Allies strike back? The Doolittle raids, the United States planes bombed uh, Tokyo. Doolittle is the name of a pilot. It doesn't mean they did little. The United States is like, yeah, we're getting back at them. It starts to fire us up. Eye of the Tiger plays. And the Battle of Coral Sea is an important battle because it's the first naval battle carried entirely by aircraft. So planes are fighting basically to control this region, to control this area. And it introduces a new type of fighting. And what that does is it prevents the Japanese from being able to attack Australia. So the Japanese basically get as far away from Japan as they can, and the Allies are going to start pushing them back. And the Coral Sea. The major battle here, we're going to see the Battle of Midway in the summer of 1942, what, just about 70 years ago. 
Did my math's right. Thanks to code breakers, Admiral Chester Nimitz, commander in chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, knew the Japanese were heading for Midway Island. Just like the British had the Enigma, the United States had these code breakers who could listen to Japanese code and interpret it and know what's going on by 1942. The U.S. J destroyed Japan's naval fleet and Japan retreated. So this is as far as Japan gets, they're starting to get knocked back. Midway was a key American airfield. It turned the tide. Again, this is that moment where Japan, 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 Japan's winning. Now America's winning. The Allies are winning. All right? And that little thing down there says, turn the tide of the war in the Pacific. So you can see Japan's here. They've taken a lot of, they've taken northern China. They've taken a lot of land through here. They've taken some islands. The Midway Island, this battle is big because now the Allies are starting to come this way and knocking back Japan. They'd already won in Midway, so you can see Japan had expanded. Now they're being pushed back. Then it leads to this island, idea of island hopping. Key name, MacArthur. MacArthur is an important Allied general from the United States of America. Oh, that's going to be annoying. General Douglas MacArthur was the commander in the Pacific. His idea was strategy, was island hopping. Hot past the enemy strongholds and attack weaker bases basically kind of cherry pick the islands that make sense to attack and then slowly but surely cut Japan off build air build airfields on those conquered islands and then use those airfields to attack those Japanese strongholds so imagine say this is Japan and there's islands here 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 and here if you know that one's a stronghold attack this one or this one this one so you can build airfields to attack Japan and you can build airfields to attack those islands. <coughs> kind of brilliant if you think about it. Island hopping. That is a guarantee word that will be on the test. Basically, where you pick and choose the islands you're going to fight over. Not every island's worth fighting over because you might lose. Here you can kind of see the Allied offensive. The red line shows how far China got. The blue kind of shows the pushing back. Pick which islands are worth fighting for. Things you definitely need to know. The Battle of Coral Sea, the Battle of Midway, probably what's fair to also mention are these two battles, Okinawa and Iwo Jima. These battles are so bloody that'll inform our thinking later on. All right? Next one is the Battle of Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal is, again, 1943. It lasts for six months. The Marines storm the island, and it's the first time J Japan is defeated on land. Uh, 24,000 lost. It's referred to the island as death by both sides. Make sure you know this. Guadalcanal and then later Iwo Jima and Okinawa were incredibly bloody battles. What we learned is the Japanese were not going to give up easily. They were going to fight literally to the death. And But what's important about Guadalcanal is it allowed U.S. bombers to be within long range of Japan. All right? So Guadalcanal is a ski island that allows us. Let's see if we can pick it out on this map for you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, sadly, it's a little too small in here to see. We'll show you in class. All right, so there's Midway. There's a victory. <coughs> All right, good. Guadalcanal right here. From there, they could launch planes, planes to attack Japan and fly back. Guadalcanal is there. We did that. Good times. Alright. Sorry about this cough I've had twice here. My bad guys. Oh gosh. We get it. Again. Super bloody. And the last thing you were supposed to see. We did that. Was this map. Here's the key thing. Know that there were two theaters in the World War II. This is considered the Pacific Theater, the fighting that happened in the Pacific. There's also the European Theater. Notice this does a nice job. Pearl Harbor, Midway, Coral Sea. All right? And the red line shows you how much Japan had advanced. All right? To give you an idea of it. Guys, that's 16.2. And here's what we're going to bring back, the secret password. The secret password for today, 
I'm looking around the house to think of a toy or think of something that would be a very good password. Here is the password. We are going to go right here with Iwo Jima. I want you to make sure you know where that island is and that is a secret password. Alright guys, have a good one. Uh,